Balance in all things. Let's see if this tea truly deserves the name Great Harmony. Hey everyone, this is Siggy, and I love all things poor. Or do I? I'm here today to kind of call that into question, actually, because the relationship I have with shoe poor in particular is a bit complicated, meaning that I don't really drink it all that much. However, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Let's see if uh, maybe I've been lying to all of you this whole time. <laughs> so what do we have today? I have here with me a uh, shoe that is new on the Nanoshan shop. It's the 2014 Bulang Great Harmony shoe. Uh, you can take a quick look here maybe. This is kind of what it looks like. Will be linked in the video description of course. Um, it's not cheap by any means. This is 32 euros for 50 grams so especially when it comes to shoe poor this is like almost top of the line in terms of what it costs. Now why is that? Most of us I think would know shoe as like kind of a more affordable alternative to shang poor that's um kind of widely available, more of a consumer type thing, but that's not quite the case every time. Especially in recent years, there has been kind of a surge in higher quality shoe poor production, a lot of like micro batch type stuff as well. And yeah, this one in particular is made from old tea tree material from the Bulang area. So the sort of base material it has is from an area with a fairly high degree of renown. Bulang is known for like good poor material. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of um, holds up against the shu poor fermentation process. So let's uh, give this a quick rinse. Gonna try to get into it as soon as possible because I imagine that for shu poor it's kind of similar to um, heavily stored aged shang poor where the uh, hotter the water is, the better. And yeah, it, like I said, shu poor is something that I personally don't drink of a lot. Uh, in essence, kind of once I had discovered H. Chang a few years ago, um, I switched over to that almost like full time. So let's see if something like this more high end Shupur can, uh, let's say, reel me back into the world of Shu. Let's give this a smell. Mmm, okay. Mmm, this is really interesting. The... I'd say the first thing I smell is... Closest probably to something like vanilla. Mmm, actually kind of nice. Vanilla and something... something else, maybe... Maybe something a bit more like caramel. That could be it. However, first impression is actually quite good. I expected there to be more things that smell kind of off. Because that basically has been my experience with Shupur thus far. That uh, it can sometimes get a bit funky in not a very good way. However, I'm quite happy to be proven wrong. And of course, I'm also happy to bring you all this particular tea, especially if it ends up being a good one. Let's see, I'm going to wait a bit on this. As uh, you all might have seen earlier, 
it came in like a bunch of small chunks and those may need a moment to steep apart. On top of that, from my experience, Shupur is quite uh, tolerant when it comes to steeping time. So you can go a bit longer, especially on the first steep, without there being too much harm. One thing that uh, is always interesting to think about when it comes to Shupur is the level of fermentation it's received. You can also go a bit more in depth. From what I've heard, there are like different techniques during fermentation that also uh, change some things like turning the pile, not turning the pile, how the pile is watered, uh, etc. But really the uh, sort of main thing you can find expressed in the flavor of Shupur is how strongly it has been fermented. Okay. The leaves on this are slowly coming apart, so I'm going to decant this first steep. Going to give this another quick smell. Okay, smells about the same as before. Vanilla. <sighs> yeah. It's... It's quite nice. The smell is a bit more intense than when I was just rinsing it. Also makes sense since like the tea is slowly coming apart. And uh, if you can see it, here's the color of the liquor. So just going by that color before we even like start drinking the tea, I'd say it's on the lighter side for Shupur. It's not like this dark, almost black kind of color. And uh, obviously it's not like a young or a medium-aged Shang Pu'er either. This, uh, it, it does have like a red tinge. But it's quite clear overall, which is also nice. So the first visual and the first uh, olfactory impression are quite good on this one. I'm... Certainly willing to give this a fair try. Let's see. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely still opening up. I think uh, the next two steeps are going to bit, uh, be a bit more full in terms of flavor. This one is still quite light. But. Uh, some things I've had before with like fairly heavily compressed tea that was also stored, either stored quite intensely or fermented like this Shupur. Uh, sometimes in the first steep, you can notice really well if there are any kind of off flavors. Because in some sense, those will be really prominent while like the rest of the tea flavor uh, comes into play once the tea has fully opened up. I am glad to report that there are no off flavors in this tea. So uh, for me personally, that's a big relief. I admittedly was a bit kind of scared and worried going into this video because of my relationship with uh, Shupur. But this first steep, no off flavors, really drinkable. I am getting that vanilla note from the aroma, even more intensely in the flavor, I'd say. Mm. Okay, uh, I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I'm going to go right into the second steep because I think we're also all curious to see what this tea does when it really has opened up properly. So far though, good impression. Texture of course isn't fully there yet either because it's still opening up. You, you can kind of notice it both in that light flavor and in a lighter texture. But I'm expecting good things, actually.
is there anything I can say about the fermentation level so far? Hmm. It's kind of difficult. What I can say is that um, this tea doesn't present itself in a way that I would usually associate with bulang material. Bulang material is known to be quite strong, quite fierce, powerful. But this tea so far is soft, mellow, pleasant, very welcoming. And it does make sense to me, in a way, because Bulang is also a, a poor tea material that has a good reputation for aging well. And if we consider the fermentation process in Shupur to essentially be intended as a substitute for long-term aging and development of the tea, then it would of course make sense that a tea base material that would age well could also ferment well. Okay, the leaves have opened up a bit more. They're still a little bit chunky, so I'm going to kind of use the lid to pry them apart a bit further before I uh, get into the next steep. Well, I can give you a quick look of these leaves and what they're like now. There you go. I hope you can see it properly. And yeah, in the second steep, the color has darkened a bit. And just from pouring, I can feel how there's already like more uh, sort of weight to the tea. Obviously, it doesn't actually weigh more, but it's got more viscosity, more body, more substance, if you will. Okay. And the color we're looking at now, um, I'm not sure if you can see it well, but this is more reminiscent to what I've seen from other Shupur. This is almost like a black coffee in terms of, uh, in terms of color, just with a slight reddish tinge. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Um, I am getting a flavor that I've encountered in a few other shoopers before that I personally quite like. It's this almost kind of yeasty flavor that gives you the impression of baked goods, especially in combination with the vanilla notes in there. Okay. And while I'm enjoying this steep, I'm gonna pour out the next one. I think with this one, the leaves should finally be fully opened up. Also gonna let this one uh, sit for a little bit again. The texture of this one is also fully present now. It is quite thick, quite viscous. No astringency, really. Yeah, this, this makes for a pretty pleasant drink. And in terms of how it tastes as a shoe pour, I'd say it's clean. It's clean for sure. You do actually get some interesting flavors coming through, especially that vanilla note that's uh, quite prominent. Overall, the character of this is pleasant and round. I think both if you're somebody like me who hasn't really been drinking a lot of Shupur, or if you're somebody who already likes shoe pour, but kind of uh, wants to take their shoe drinking to the next level, this could be a good option. Because at least compared to a lot of other shoe I've had, this certainly feels like something 
let's say, a bit higher level, if you will. Something that has had more uh, care and craftsmanship put into it. Okay. So we got the third steep already good to go. And I'm just gonna do a fourth one real quick because these steeps are going quite quickly and uh, I want to provide you with as many impressions of this as possible. As always, if you enjoy me delving into these different types of tea, please uh, give the video a like, leave a comment, maybe if you've tried this tea, or if you've tried any of the other kind of newer, uh, more higher-end shoepuers that Nanoshan has started offering, let me know how you feel about those, whether they were worth it to you, and especially how they compare to other shoepuers you've had before. Like, do you feel there's a notable difference between these ones and, let's say, for example, like a factory shoe pour? Okay, three steeps in. This tea has opened up. Still no off flavors which I really greatly appreciate. I'm super relieved that uh, I actually ended up enjoying this tea. And this is a great start. It has me really optimistic for the uh, other new shoes that recently went up. You might end up seeing those in a video at some point as well. No uh, guarantee yet, but if they're comparable to this one, I'd uh, certainly be willing to drink them anytime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is good. I like it. It's also like a really sort of nice, warming and comforting feeling that this tea gives me. And I find that to be another good thing because I've like had some uh, experiences with Al Shupur that, for example, caused me to have like a bit of an upset stomach and different things. And I'm not getting any of that here. It, uh, like, one of the reasons I used to not really drink much shupur is because, uh, it almost kind of felt like my body was rejecting it to a certain degree, but none of that is present with that tea here. I feel perfectly comfortable drinking this. Hence also my suggestion. If you're somebody who's skeptical about shupur or doesn't seem to enjoy Shupur in general, give this one a try. I think in particular if you enjoy like well-aged Shangpur or uh, maybe even traditional stored Shangpur, then uh, the flavor profile on this tea might be something you enjoy. At least it's certainly the case for me. Yeah, this, this is absolutely one of the best shoepuers that I've tried so far. Also, you may have noticed uh, I've let this steep sit for a fair while now. I did make the claim earlier that shoepuer is quite uh, resistant to oversteeping. So let's find out if that's the case with this one as well. This is going to be our final steep of the video. It was sitting there for a fair while. 
but I'm not really expecting this to uh, be problematic in any way. So far, this tea has given me a lovely impression. Uh, if you don't want to commit to a full bing or uh, even 50 grams, I think Nanoshan also has 6 gram samples available. That's what I use today. 6 grams in this uh, 100 milliliter Gaiwan. Mm. Yeah. As expected, no negative changes. This tea keeps going the way it did ever since, basically the second steep. Very consistent, very pleasant, very comfortable. It's got some nice flavors to it. It's got a pleasant texture. No kind of off flavors. There's really nothing unpleasant about it to me. And that, I think, is a good sign that this is indeed like a quality tea that's made well. Um, often Shupur has this kind of implicit reputation of like the material that wasn't worth being made into Shangpur is turned into Shupur instead. And I can somewhat confidently say that this is not the case here. I think both the base material is good and the kind of level and method of fermentation that were chosen suit the base material well and produce a result that is harmonious indeed. It is a very comfortable and harmonious tea. And because of that, I think it's a very fitting title. So if you end up getting this tea, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. Do you agree that this is a uh, tea that's worthy of its title? And yeah, I'm gonna finish the steep. Thank you, as always, for watching this video. And I hope to see you all again soon. Goodbye.